All right, good afternoon. It's now 1.45. All graduates should be making their way to the lineup tents outside to get ready. Uh, just a reminder to please silence your cell phones. Um, also, please try to fill every available seat by moving to the center so that we have enough seating for everybody. And again, the doors are going to close at 2 p.m. and they will not open until after the students have marched in. Thank you.
All right, everybody, this is the last time you're going to hear from me before we get started. We are about five minutes out from the ceremony. We are going to start promptly at 2 p.m. So one final reminder to please silence your cell phones. Also, please try to fill all seats by moving towards the center. If you would like to get water, now would be the time to fill your glass because we will be shutting the beverage stations down during the ceremony in order to keep the aisles clear. We also ask that you remain for the entirety of the ceremony. Uh, again, we're gonna be getting started here in about five minutes. The doors will close and you will not be allowed to come back into the ceremony until after the students have been said. Thank you.
Good afternoon. Please be seated. I am Jeff Barksdale, Provost and Chief Academic Officer for Columbia Southern University, and I would like to welcome you to the 2016 Commencement Ceremony. We are here to celebrate the accomplishments of our graduates and are pleased to have family and friends in attendance today who have supported our graduates through their journey at CSU. I would also like to welcome our honored guests, our faculty and staff. At this time, I hereby declare the 2016 commencement ceremony to be open. I would like to take this time to introduce the platform party. Vice Provost for Student Affairs, Dr. Scott Rounds. Board of Trustees Chairman Forney Howard. <laughs> President Robert Mays. <laughs> Chief of Staff Ken Styron. <laughs> Keynote Speaker John Quinones. <laughs> Senior Vice President Chantel Cooley. <laughs> Chairman of the Board of Trustees of Waldorf University, Reverend Buford Lipscomb. <laughs> Rachel Ferris. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome City Administrator of Orange Beach, Ken Grimes. Good afternoon. On behalf of the City of Orange Beach, Mayor Tony Kennan, our City Council, our staff, our citizens, we want to welcome you to Orange Beach, Alabama. I know many of you have never been to Alabama, but guess what? We have beaches. And here in Orange Beach, Alabama, we say life is better here is our motto. And so we hope that while you're here, not just getting a, a degree and not just celebrating with family, but we hope that you're able to catch a sunrise, a sunset, uh, put your feet in the sand, whatever it is, but please remember that this is something that's special. And besides the fact that this is home to Columbia Southern University, that we're so proud that you're able to come here with us. Uh, as city administrator, I'm, I'm pleased and I'm blessed that I get to deal with the Mays and the Cooley family. And I just want to tell you that Columbia Southern was founded uh, on the premises that are so strong. And so many of you know that. You've invested your time, energy, and, and funds. But as it boils down to the situations, uh, you are in a unique and special opportunity. For all of us, it is so pleasing to see uh, folks that are working in the workplace today, moms and dads, grandparents, earning degrees. I am so proud as I look at your faces, and compared to the high school faces, when I get to talk to them, it's totally different, so y'all can smile. Y'all know how this goes. And you're not ready to leave home necessarily, you just want them out. So I think the thing I want to just tell you, I want to, in closing for the welcome, we are so proud to have you here. We're so pleased that many of you traveled around the world, literally, and we're, we hope that your experience is great and dynamic. I want to tell you just that you need to be, as you will become graduates, even though you may be in the workplace already, you may be in a career, you may already be established as the leader of your department or agency, I want you to be strong. I want you to gain that strength that you need in this new journey in the next chapter. I want you to be courageous. I want you to be a warrior as you carry forth. Fight for what you know is right. Fight for your beliefs. I don't want you to be afraid. Don't ever worry. And please do not be discouraged. Discouragement comes from Satan himself. And discouragement is something in the workplace and in your lives. Not of heads. How many of you have been discouraged in the last year with this? Just trying to finish, right? Cross that line. Well, those words are true because it's Joshua 1.9 in our Bible. And I want to encourage you to look up Joshua 1.9 when you can. I stand firm on this because on April 30th, my daughter's boyfriend, who we probably were going to have as our son-in-law, was killed in a tragic accident. And this was his favorite verse. His name was Nathan Harris. So I carry forth the legacy for you because those same words carry for us today. Whatever you accomplish, do it the best you can. Do it with all of your might. And on behalf of the city of Orange Beach, do it for the best opportunity for you and for Columbia Southern and what you've earned. Have a great day. Great graduation. Congratulations.
Thank you, Ken. I now have the honor of introducing our next speaker, State Representative Randy Davis. Representative Davis was first elected to the Alabama House of Representatives in November of 2002 and is serving his fourth term. He is the Majority Whip, Chairman of the Constitutions and Elections Committee, the Reapportionment Committee Co-Chairman, and serves on various other committees. He received his Bachelor and Master of Music Education from the University of Southern Mississippi and an Educational Specialist degree from Alabama State University. Representative Davis currently serves as the Director of Music Ministries for Daphne United Methodist Church. He also serves as the resident conductor of the Baldwin County Pops Band and recently founded the North Mobile Community Chamber Symphony. He resides in Daphne, Alabama with his family. Representative Davis. Thank you, Dr. Barksdale, for those comments and that welcome, and to you, Mr. Grimes, for your enthusiasm. Let me say first to all of you, thank you for this opportunity to welcome you here on this very, very special occasion. I had the opportunity to be with another group this morning uh, at our 9 o'clock commencement. Since that time, I've been with those graduates and members of the faculty, and my enthusiasm has gone up significantly. So I'm beginning to get this bond feeling that, uh, that we talk about. Uh, my brother has a grandchild who called him and said, Granddaddy, Granddaddy, I got new glasses today. Now, she's five years old, and he said, Well, honey, are you nearsighted or farsighted? She paused on the phone a moment, and she said, Well, Granddaddy, right now I am just excited. <laughs> My goodness, I know you're excited too. And uh, I am truly excited to be with you on this very, very special occasion. Uh, let me make my remarks here, and, and I want to say those to, with such sincerity that the faculty, all that you have done to prepare the way, the Mays family, all that you've done in the foundation, and to you, the graduates, my goodness, and to all of those, that support team out there, and your family and your friends. I've done this a few times, and I could not do it without those family and friends picking me up along the way. And uh, I just want to bring greetings to you from our legislative delegation here in Baldwin County and all of the citizens of Baldwin County in the fastest growing county in Alabama. We grow by 13 people per day of which three of those are school-aged children. Now, if you don't live here, we've got room for you. It's also the largest county east of the Mississippi River. So come on, we've got room for you, and we welcome you. And you might say, well, how are you keeping up with the growth? And it's a simple answer. You've got to be prepared. And we have a Columbia Southern University that is one of our teammates. Yes, a teammate who has set some high standards and moves those standards up continuously. I've served in the education community for more than 40 years, both in secondary and post-secondary level. And as a member of the Southern States Education Board, we are constantly looking at ways to achieve a high-quality, cost-effective education plan for our communities. It is so important. Here at CSU, they provide us with that opportunity. The course offerings, the opportunity for online and distance learning are so important to our community. The treatment of our veterans and our non-traditional students surpasses all expectations. And I can truly say this after today and being with you, our long-term relationships that bond us to the CSU experience. Let me thank you, let me congratulate you, and to all the, the members on this stage, thank you for your hard work, and you're the champions today. Thank you so much for your hard work. We need you. Thank you, Representative Davis. Wow, you graduates, you look pretty awesome out there. 
Let's give them a hand again. Man, I'm so proud. I just want to encourage you that each day you live, give back. Change more lives. Your life has been changed and you've moved yourself forward. Now change more lives. Don't go to bed without saying, hey, I made a difference today. And just be you. Amen? It's an honor to have with us today the Naval Air Technical Training Center Performing Unit and Tommy Cooley singing the National Anthem. Please stand for the Parade of Colors and the National Anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light What so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming Whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming. And the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the And now I'd like to ask Reverend uh, Buford Lipscomb from Liberty Church in Pensacola, Florida to come forward to give the invocation. Good afternoon, everybody. Could we pray together at this time? Father in heaven, we lift up this, the special proceedings of the 2016 Columbia Southern University graduation and the graduating class now here before us. We honor each of them in this great place, in this moment they stand in. We thank you, Lord, for their persistence and dedication, their tenacity. And we thank you, Lord, that when they wanted to quit, they didn't, that they're here today. Lord, we honor their family members and those who have stood beside them and stood with them during these times that have been challenging, to say the least. And Lord, we also lift up today our CSU team, our family, our our board of trustees and chair and the faculty, the staff, Lord, the Cooley Mays family, and Lord, their dedication and passion for the mission of bringing thousands of graduates to this same place today. And Lord, we pray for this time that you would be with us and bless us, Lord, as this ceremony unfolds. In Jesus' name, 
Amen. You may be seated. Today I have the honor of introducing to you my brother, CSU President Robert Mays. Robert has been president since 2005, assuming this role after the unexpected death of our father. I can say with total confidence that he has done a supreme job of leading CSU these last 11 years. Robert is fully committed to CSU's mission and vision, which is to change and improve lives through higher education, to enable students to maximize their professional and personal potential, and to serve the communities in which they live and work. Robert and I have been work, working together now for over 20 years, and I'm so proud of what he's accomplished and excited to see him continue to lead CSU into the future. So please join me in welcoming your president, Robert Mays. Well, welcome graduates, welcome on our guests, faculty and staff. Uh, what an amazing day. Uh, and thank you, John Kionis, for being with us today to be our keynote speaker. We're, we're very, very honored. Graduates, I'd like, you to th I'd like to thank you for choosing CSU. Um, that means the world to us. The day between both ceremonies, we're honored to have approximately 700 graduates in attendance and approximately 2,600 family, guests, and friends. I'd also like to welcome all those attending online via our live stream video. CSU has a very strong student body of more than 29,000 students across this country and across the world and over 42,000 alumni, which you are now a part of. Since the 2015 commencement, 7,000 over 400 students have graduated from CSU degree programs. CSU students are assisted by over 1,100 CSU faculty and staff who strive to provide an exceptional service for you every day. And many CSU students are associated with one of many of more than 3,100 organizations and municipalities and companies that are CSU learning partners. Graduates, you have traveled from 43 different states in the U.S. and 29 countries to celebrate this special milestone in your life. Today, we recognize your hard work and determination that you have dedicated to earning your degree. Approximately 43% of CSU students are active military or veterans, and CSU is very, very proud to be a top institution serving our, our armed forces. So veterans and active duty military members who are either in attendance as a guest or a graduate or a family member, would you please stand so that we can recognize you? Thank you for your service. Some of CSU's top programs serve the needs of those in law enforcement, fire, EMS, and other emergency services. As a result, a large number of CSU students are public safety personnel and first responders. Will all public safety personnel and first responders please stand? Thank you for your service. Please notice that both military and public safety personnel are wearing red, red, white, and blue cords in recognition of all they do for our country. I would like to also recognize the Columbia Southern University executive team, the leadership, and the staff who are dedicated to you and they go out of their way to fulfill the requests of our students every day. Many of those uh, staff members, leadership, are here with us today. If you would please stand and let's recognize them, please. And most importantly, sitting to your left in the front of the auditorium is many of your CSU faculty members. Our faculty members are spread all across this country. It is our faculty that have the most significant interaction with you, our students, and more than anyone, they have contributed to laying the foundation of an educational CSU learning experience. And over the last day or so that I've been able to meet many of you, you have told me over and over how great your experience was with your faculty member and how much that meant. So I'd like to ask our faculty to please stand and let's recognize them. <clears throat> to 
to recognize and, and honor an outstanding achievement and contribution by a CSU faculty member, the Robert G. May Sr. Distinguished Faculty of the Year Award was established. I'm proud to announce the recipient of the 2016 award is Mr. Dennis Phelan. Mr. Phelan, would you please join me on the stage? Mr. Phelan, yes, thank you. Mr. Phelan joined CSU in 2012 as a part-time faculty member, and in December 2014, he transitioned to full-time. He teaches Homeland Security and Criminal Justice. Mr. Phelan received a Master of Arts in Homeland Security from American Military University. He is a member of several honor societies. Mr. Phelan served the United States Navy during the first Gulf War. His professional background includes experience in the fields of counterterrorism, emergency medical services, and special operations, EMS, firefighting, as well as healthcare and healthcare leadership. Mr. Phelan currently resides in San Diego, California with Angela, his wife of 17 years. They have two daughters, a 10-year-old ballerina and a 12-year-old horse champion. He enjoys being outside, camping, hiking, biking, and trail running. Let's recognize Mr. Phelan. Please give him a round of applause. So thank you for choosing CSU and thank you for choosing to celebrate this incredible day with us. It is so means so much for you to be here with us today. My most sincere gratitude, congratulations to you all. God bless. Good afternoon. I'd like to take this opportunity to introduce our keynote speaker, John Quinones. He is an Emmy Award winning co-anchor of the ABC News Magazine Primetime and has been with the network for nearly 30 years. He is the sole anchor of the Primetime series, What Would You Do? One of the highest rated news magazine franchises in recent years. He has reported extensively for ABC News and in 2010 was the first reporter out of the 2000 journalists who covered the Chilean mining disaster to get an exclusive interview with one of the survivors. His work for What Would You Do captures the way people react when confronted with dilemmas that compel them to either take action or walk away. He has followed would-be Mexican immigrants attempting to cross into the U.S. via the deadly infamous route known as the Devil's Highway, as well as other investigative endeavors indicative of the understanding his heritage allows. I would hope you all find the same inspiration that I do from John, and I would like to be honored if you would join me in welcoming him to the stage. Please give a round of applause for John Keonez. All right. All right. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, how are you? Thank you, Ken. He's getting better and better at pronouncing Quinones. It's not the easiest name to pronounce. Yes, I am the host and the creator of What Would You Do? I hope you've seen the show. It's that candid camera of ethics and morals. The show that asks the question, when you see something disturbing, uh, an injustice, or spousal abuse, or racism, or bullying. And that little voice in the back of your head says, do something. Do you step in, or do you step away? It's also the show that's made it impossible for me to go have dinner anywhere without people wondering, what's going to happen here, John? It's great to be here. What a glorious afternoon here in Orange Beach, Alabama. I love this place. I was saying earlier, I want to move here. Uh, I'm very honored to be here. Uh, you did it, the 2016 graduating class of Columbia Southern University. Uh, it is really a pleasure and so impressive of what you've done here because unlike most college graduates, you have beaten all kinds of odds and you've accomplished it by working twice as hard. You've done this as adults, holding down jobs, supporting your families, serving in the U.S. military, 43% of you. Congratulations. How about a hat for them again, huh? Amazing. And I think because you've worked twice as hard, you're going to appreciate this more than anyone else. So what would John Quinones do? I would congratulate each and every one of you and your families, because the families have been by your side on this momentous occasion. I got to tell you, I'm really honored and humbled. I'm humbled to be here because if you had told me when I was a little boy so many years ago that someday I would be invited to give this kind of commencement address, I would have laughed you out of the building. 
Because you see, the world never expected much for John, from John Quinones. Even today, the people who see me on television and think that I've always been there with Barbara Walters and Robin Roberts and George Stephanopoulos and you know, Peter Jennings and uh, Diane Sawyer, people who only know me from being on television up there have no idea, no idea the long, hard struggle that it took for John Quinones to get to ABC News. I was born in poverty in the barrios, in the poor neighborhoods of San Antonio. And you know how some people say, we were poor, but we didn't know we were poor. We knew we were poor. <laughs> we had an old black and white television at the back of the house, and we saw how the other side lived. And to the outside world, I was just another Mexican-American kid from the bad side of town, the kid who came from a world of drugs, drive-by shootings, and gang violence. I didn't speak English when I was six years old. Um, and it's funny because when you grow up in San Antonio, in a community like San Antonio, which is 60% Hispanic, you don't have to learn English. The church was in Spanish. The corner store was in Spanish. My entire community spoke everything in Spanish. It's just like asking the South to get rid of their Southern accent. It ain't going to happen. Um, and it's funny because the Quinones family has been in Texas for seven generations. I'm very American. You know, Texas was once part of Spain. Texas was once part of Mexico. So today I love it when people come up to me and say, John Quinones, you're Mexican-American. When did you cross the border? It's like, we were always there, you know? I never crossed the border, the border crossed me. <laughs> my father picked cotton growing up in South Texas. You know, he was also a janitor at my high school. My mother dropped out of school in the third grade and she would scrub the floors and wash the laundry of rich folks on the north side of San Antonio, the nicer part of town. Like I said, I didn't speak a word of English when I went to the first grade, and this is before bilingual education or you know, preschool. My sisters and I had none of that. We went straight to public school in the first grade. And I'll never forget being in uh, the first grade on the very first day of school in Mrs. Gregory's class in Carvajal Elementary. I didn't speak English, she, did, she didn't speak Spanish. So I'm sitting there sort of twiddling my thumbs and at 10 in the morning the bell rings and of course the kids run out to the playground for recess. Where does little Juanito Quinones go? I walked home. <laughs> I lived a block away from the school. <laughs> and I got home and my mother, God rest her soul, Maria, she goes, Juanito, que paso? What are you doing here? And I said, se acabó, it's over mom. I love school, you know, <laughs> two hours and you're done. I think this is going to work out very well. She grabbed me by the ear and dragged me back to Mrs. Gregory's first grade class. She knew, she knew that education would be my ticket out of the barrio. But I also knew that my family was struggling and I had to do what I could to help them out. So as an eight-year-old little boy, I used to shine shoes in San Antonio with my cousin Joe. Ten cents a pair we would charge. We liked to go to all the, uh, the cantinas, the bars, because the drunk guys didn't realize how much they were tipping us. And we made a killing. Until one night, we're coming home, and we got jumped by a rival gang in my community, because this was a tough neighborhood. And they stole all my rags and my shoe shine polishes and all of my earnings from the night. And that was the end of my shoe shining career. But you know, the great African American poet Maya Angelou once said that we all marvel at the beauty of the butterfly, but rarely, seldom do we consider all the changes that that butterfly goes through to attain that beauty. And man, I'm no butterfly, but I've been through some changes. When I was 13, my father was laid off from work as a janitor. And we did, my two sisters, my mother and father and I, we did what a lot of Latino families in South Texas did back then. We, we became migrant farm workers. We joined a caravan of trucks, jumped on the back of these trucks, and we journeyed 1,700 miles to Northport, Michigan, north of Traverse City, Michigan, the cherry capital of the world where we picked cherries for 75 cents a bucket. And I remember our teetering on the top of these ladders overlooking these cherry orchards, and it would take me two hours to fill that darn bucket for 75 cents. And then after that, we did what all migrant farm workers did. We followed the crops 
Six weeks later, down to Ohio, outside of Toledo, Ohio, Swanton, Ohio, I'll never forget, where we picked tomatoes for 35 cents a bushel. And man, I was a champion tomato picker. I did 100 bushels a day. That's $35 a day, right? And then my father did about as much, and then my sisters, my mother, and we learned the value, as many of you have, of the family coming together in times of difficulty and pulling themselves up by the bootstraps, you know. Uh, you know, someone once said that life, life is not all about avoiding the bruises. Life is about collecting the scars to prove that we showed up for the fight. And I collected a lot of scars. It was in those tomato fields while kneeling on the cold, hard ground at six in the morning with my dad, looking at a row of tomato plants that for a young 13-year-old boy's eyes seemed to go on for miles and miles. That's what I had to look forward to that day. And my father, Bruno, looking down and saying, Juanito, you want to do this for the rest of your life? Or do you want to get a college education? It was a no-brainer. Of course, I knew I didn't want to do that for the rest of my life. Ever since a little, I was a little boy, I wanted to be a TV reporter. I used to watch Geraldo Rivera in 2020 and dream of someday being like Geraldo. But back then, there were very few people on, besides Geraldo who looked like me or sounded like me on television. And beyond that, very few people believed in me, except for my dear mother, Maria. She was the one who kept pushing me, encouraging me to dream big dreams and not to ever give up on those dreams. You know, when, uh, when, when I would complain about, you know, going to school and, and, and being embarrassed, she would say, remember, you're just as smart and talented as those kids who live in the rich part of town. It doesn't matter, she would say, that you have to wear the same clothes to school every other day. At least we wash those clothes, right? They're clean. It doesn't matter that you have to take bean and tortilla tacos for lunch while all the other kids are taking their fancy bologna and white bread. It doesn't matter. But now we know that beans have more protein, right? <laughs> we got the last laugh on that. She would say, it doesn't matter, my son. What matters is what's in your head and what's here in your corazón. And yet, it was hard for me to see that because I had very few role models. No one in my entire family had ever gone to college. Again, few people believed in me. In high school, when I would ask my own teachers, my own counselors, how do I prepare for the ACT? How do I prepare for the SATs? How do I take advanced placement classes, right, in math and English, so that someday I might get into college? Do you know what my teachers would say? They would say, that's great, John, that you have this dream of being a TV reporter, but we think that you should try wood shop or metal shop or auto mechanics or vocational programs. There's nothing wrong with those great trades. A lot of people make a good hard living doing that. But my own teachers did what people do on what would you do every Friday night. They judged me by the color of my skin and the accent in my voice. I wanted to go to college, and then they, they didn't get it. They didn't think another Mexican kid could make it from that neighborhood. Well, guess what? I proved them wrong. They were wrong. I just needed a little help, a little inspiration. It was during the Civil Rights Movement, and I remember I found great inspiration in the words of Martin Luther King. He was the one who so eloquently said, when you're faced with adversity, have faith. And faith is taking that first step. It doesn't matter if you don't see the entire staircase, just take that first step, because tomorrow there'll be another step, and then another, and then another. My first step was asking for government help. And I was accepted into this federal anti-poverty program called Upward Bound. I don't know if you're familiar with it, but Upward Bound saved my life. You know, today a lot of people will call it a welfare program. For me, it was a lifesaver. It changed my entire life. I was able to get into college because I got extra courses on Saturday mornings while I was in high school. And I got to live on a college campus for six weeks during the summer of my high school career. The theory was simple. The only real way out of poverty is through education. What, a, what an idea, huh? And that's not to say that even with a college degree, things would be easy. When I graduated from St. Mary's University in San Antonio, I couldn't, for the life of me, get a job in television. No one would hire me. I was depressed, on the brink of giving up on my dream. 
But then I came to my senses, and I decided that I would not let those negative naysayers, the people who didn't believe in me, win. I wouldn't let them win. I decided to force society to believe in me, even if it meant that I would have to be twice as qualified as everyone else. So I applied to another school, to the Columbia Graduate School of Journalism, the best journalism school in the country. And maybe it's because I had the audacity, the audacity to do that, that I was accepted to the school. And guess what? Not only that, I was given a fellowship to study at Columbia University. I learned very quickly that when the going gets tough, you just got to keep pushing. You got to keep knocking on those doors, sometimes tearing down those doors. After graduating from Columbia University with a master's degree, there was no holding me back. I got a job as a local reporter in Chicago, and then three years later, I was offered the position of network correspondent at ABC News to work with Peter Jennings. It was the 1980s, and Central America was blowing up. There were civil wars going on in Nicaragua and places like Panama and El Salvador, and the networks needed Spanish-speaking reporters. You know what? The irony was not lost on me. Here was this kid who used to get punished in school because my art coach, when I was a little boy in elementary school, the coach had a paddle, and they would punish us for speaking Spanish. He had a paddle, and he had drilled extra holes in it for speed <laughs> and power. And honest to God, they would give us three spankings on our rear end if they caught us speaking Spanish. And now, you know, 20 years later, I wind up getting my dream network job in television precisely because I spoke Spanish. Over the years, it taught me some valuable lessons. First, that you gotta take advantage of every single thing that makes you who you are, the things that make you unique. I also learned that so much of success, so much of making it is here, is a state of mind. Always keep reminding yourselves that you are worthy, that you are unique. There's no one else in the world quite like you. And remember this, don't be intimidated when someone tries to put you down, to bring you down. They're just projecting their own problems and failings upon you. Pay them no mind. Ignore them. Instead, surround yourself with people who believe like you, people who believe in you. Yes, you should persevere and work hard because in the end, you'll be better for it. But you also have to, in your own mind, envision yourself as a success in whatever you go into. Cleanse your brain of any and all negative influences. And when people criticize you because of the way you don't look or because you don't sound a certain way or because you don't practice the same lifestyle or religion that they do, ignore them. It's not worth the time and energy. And as you move through life, be concerned about your character and not your reputation. Not your reputation, because your character is what really matters. That's who you truly are. Your reputation, eh, that's merely what other people think you are, which is often based on their own flawed perceptions and faulty assumptions. If you believe in yourself above everything else, then no one or nothing can stop you. And one other thing. Whatever profession you're going into, whatever it is you're pursuing now, make sure it's not just a job, but rather a career for which you have a real passion for. Chase that dream because there's a fire in your belly that burns for it. The kind of work that you would do even if you weren't getting paid for it. Now that will bring you true happiness and satisfaction. And please know that money and material things alone will never make you happy. The love of discovery, the joy of adventure, the satisfaction of helping others, making a difference in people's lives, giving a voice to the voiceless. Now there's the greatest reward. And toward that end, don't forget those you've left behind, your younger brothers and sisters and cousins and those other folks back in your communities who may be lacking in hope, in ambition, or enthusiasm. Go back there and be a role model for them. Inspire them. Let them see that if you could, if you could make it to college and excel, then of course they can too. Someone once told me that when you get on the elevator of success and you get to the top floor, make sure you push that button and send the elevator back down to pick up the folks who are still waiting. And finally, don't judge 
others based on their looks, color of their skin, the accent in their voice, or the religion they practice. After hosting my show, What Would You Do All These Years?, I've learned that despite all the progress we've made in this country with regard to diversity and inclusion, we still have some work to do when it comes to accepting people who are different from us. Too many of us are still talking about building higher and higher walls, and we should be talking about building stronger and stronger bridges. You know, the Reverend Martin Luther King also said that our lives begin to end the moment we stay silent about things that matter. And I urge every one of you here today to never ever remain silent about anything that matters. Because that would mean that you would lose one of humanity's greatest attributes, our sense of compassion. And if ever the chips are down and you're feeling depressed with that dreaded sense that you're not gonna make it in this world, remember this Mexican-American kid from San Antonio who spoke no English the kid who shined shoes on the streets of the barrio and had to pick cherries and tomatoes with his family as a migrant farm worker. He had no money, no connections to anyone in power, but what he did have was a dream, a die-hard sense of perseverance. He also had what we call in Spanish, ganas, all the willpower he could muster. And if that little kid, this little kid, could make his wildest dreams come true and become a network anchor and TV correspondent and have his own show, then anything, anything is possible in this great country of ours. Congratulations to every single one of you CSU graduates. Now go out there and conquer the world. All right? Thank you very much. It's great being you here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's very kind, man. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. It's a pleasure, we're very, very proud of you guys and your families, thank you. Thank you, John, for those inspiring words. As we're preparing to move into the next phase of our ceremony, I would like for you to know that you are welcome to express and acknowledge the accomplishments of your family members and your friends as they walk across the stage. At this time, will the doctoral candidates please rise and come forward. Zenobia Dover Harris. President Mays, this candidate, Zenobia Dover Harris, has completed all the requirements for the doctoral degree. Her dissertation is titled Foundation for Quality Management Model. On behalf of the faculty, I recommend the doctoral degree be conferred upon the candidate at this time. With the authority granted to me by the state of Alabama and approval of the board and faculty of Columbia Southern University, I hereby confer upon you the doctoral degree and all the rights and privilege to which you are entitled. <clears throat> I now present to you Sonovia Dover Harris, Dr. Sonovia Dover Harris. Sharif Islam. Doctor. President Mays. This candidate, Sharif Islam, has completed all requirements for the doctoral degree. His dissertation is titled The Effects of Green Marketing on Consumer Behavior. On behalf of the faculty, I recommend the doctoral degree be conferred upon the candidate at this time. With the authority granted to me by the state of Alabama and approval of the board and faculty of Columbia Southern University, I hereby confer upon you the doctoral degree and all the rights and privileges to which you are entitled. Uh, 
I now present to you Dr. Sharif Islam. Frank Jones. President Mays, this candidate, Frank Jones, has completed all requirements for the doctoral degree. His dissertation is titled, Servant Leadership and Job Satisfaction, a Casual Comparative Study. On behalf of the faculty, I recommend the doctoral degree be conferred upon the candidate at this time. With the authority granted to me by the state of Alabama and approval of the board and faculty of Columbia Southern University, I hereby confer upon you the doctoral degree and all the rights and privileges to which you are entitled. I now present to you Dr. Frank Jones. Ainsley Dean Linton. President Mays, this candidate, Ainsley Linton, has completed all requirements for the doctoral degree. His dissertation is titled, The Effect of Email-Related Obligation and Stress on Job Productivity. On behalf of the faculty, I recommend the doctoral degree be conferred upon the candidate at this time. With the authority granted to me by the state of Alabama and approval of the board and faculty of Columbia Southern University, I hereby confer upon you the doctoral degree and all the rights and privileges to which you are entitled. <laughs> now I present to you Dr. Ansley Linton. Adeshino Odueko. President Mays, this candidate, Adeshino Odueko, has completed all requirements for the doctoral degree. His dissertation is titled, How Goal Setting Can Influence Goal Achievement, a Phenomenological Study. On behalf of the faculty, I recommend the doctoral degree be conferred upon the candidate at this time. With the authority granted to me by the state of Alabama and the approval of the board and faculty of Columbia Southern University, I hereby confer upon you the doctoral degree and all the rights and privileges to which you are entitled. <laughs> and now I present you Dr. Adeshino Odueko. Amanda Marie Walder Pavari. President Mays, this candidate, Amanda Pavari, has completed all requirements for the doctoral degree. Her dissertation is titled Intrinsic Multiple Intelligencies of Nursing Leaders and Followers, a Quantitative Study. On behalf of the faculty, I recommend the doctoral degree be conferred upon the candidate at this time. With the authority granted to me by the state of Alabama and approval of the board and faculty of Columbia Southern University, I hereby confer upon you the doctoral degree and all the rights and privileges to which you are entitled. <laughs> and now I present you Dr. Amanda Parvare. <laughs> Thomas A. Shaw. President Mays, this candidate, Thomas A. Shull, has completed all requirements for the doctoral degree. His dissertation is titled, The Relationship Between Leadership Practices of First-Line Supervisors and Job Commitment of Deputies in Jail Facilities. On behalf of the faculty, I recommend that the doctoral degree be conferred upon the candidate at this time. With the authority granted to me by the state of Alabama and approval of the board and faculty of Columbia Southern University, I hereby confer upon you the doctoral degree and all the rights and privileges to which you are entitled. <laughs> I now present, you, present to you Dr. Thomas A. Scholl. Yes. 
Sudar Stanislas. President Mays, this candidate, Sudar Stanislas, has completed all the requirements for the doctoral degree. His dissertation is titled An In-Depth Study of the Situational Analysis of India's Microfinance Industry. On behalf of the faculty, I recommend the doctoral degree be conferred upon the candidate at this time. With the authority granted to me by the state of Alabama and approval of the board and faculty of Columbia Southern University, I hereby confer upon you the doctoral degree and all the rights and privileges to which you are entitled. I now present to you Dr. Sudar Stanislas. Makisha Michelle Tucker. President Mays, this candidate, Makisha Tucker, has completed all requirements for the doctoral degree. Her dissertation is titled, Ethics in the Federal Government, Perceptions by Federal Employees. On behalf of the faculty, I recommend the doctoral degree be conferred upon the candidate at this time. With the authority granted to me by the state of Alabama and approval of the board and faculty of Columbia Southern University, I hereby confer upon you the doctoral degree and all the rights and privileges to which you are entitled. I now present to you Dr. Makisha Tucker. Let's have one more round of applause for our doctoral graduates. <laughs> Will the master's degree candidates please rise? Chairman Howard, these candidates have completed all requirements for the master's degree. On behalf of the faculty, I recommend the master's degree be conferred upon them at this time. With the authority granted to me by the state of Alabama and approval of the board and faculty of Columbia Southern University, I hereby confer upon you the master's degree and all the rights and privileges to which you are entitled. Please move your tassel from the left to the right side of your cap as a sign to all of this great achievement. I congratulate you and applaud you. Will each candidate for the master's degree please come forward as your name is called to receive your diploma.
Antoine Gerald Cunningham, Sr. Christopher Wayne Taylor. Don R. Myers. Heather Jean Knowles. Victor Rafael Bertran. Brandy Rose Smith. Jessica Ainsworth. Keith Lamont Humphrey. Rio Budd. Carl J. Newton. Sydney L. Powell. Margaret Janelle Williams. Floyd N. Sherelle II. Gretchen Joaquita Chapman. Joshua R. Ford. Kyron Paul Regis. Brian Ray Collier. Jasmine Asin. Uduak Okpak. Karina L. Schaffner. Stenson D. Ellenberg. Terry Thomas Cooper. Tanya Odette Green. Kiena Chantel Jackson. Akesi Lasha Arroyo. Angela Thompson Wilson. Trinette Michelle Thomas. I. Wesley Cook. Joshua Adam Sige. Adam Blaine Neff. Amir Marat. William Christopher Clark. Chad Keon Magalianis. Christopher Paul Schott. Richard Dale Holshen. Calvin Levon Wilson. Edward Owens Maxwell. Ashley B. Hilliard. Abrilia Tequila Scott Porter. Nakisha Lachey ben Bennett. Cantilida Fatella Simmons Coleman. Chad A. Dufault Sr. Sarah Soto Hinojosa. Jill L. Patton. Willie F. Larkins, Jr. Yolanda Michelle Ng. Cheryl Lynn Coleman. Kevin D. Arnold. Kimberly Sheeran. Gary J. Dudley, Sr. Antonio J. Olaverieta. Gregory Allen Hayes. Shamika D. Scott Smith. Chandra B. Stalwer. Shannon M. O'Brien. John A. Collier the Fourth, Roy Glenn Coulter, 
Juliet Muthama. Wayne I. Reynolds. Janice DeBose Wyrick. Hypesha Melissa Dunn. Larissa Ebony Smith. Sherelle LaShonda Martin. May D. Jones. Amanda Dawn Sarmack. Tabitha Bullock. Madeline Everett. Mimi Catherine Henning. Steven Lorendo. Roland Menazil. George Anthony Metzger. Darcy Black. Bonnie Schrader. Asoiva Molia Fuyava Thompson. Shantae D. McLaughlin. Stacy Latrice Pritchett. Lawanda S. Neely. Wendy Darnell Austin Lett. Karina Mitchell. Amy J. Harden. David W. Collier. Kimbin M. Mallorca. Christopher R. Dillon. Susan Michelle Smith. Joanne M. Coleman. Ramelia Dimitric Pryor. Arlen Lance James. Thaddeus Andre Murat. Benjamin N. Israel. Deborah Jean Gualtieri. Anisha Shiranant. Vaughn Porter. Leonard H. Samples, Sr. Paula Jo Engel. Christine F. Chantal. Sherry Patterson Sims. Shannon Palmer. Marcus Malone. Wallace James Edmondson III. Jeanette Olivia McLaughlin. Tracy Moreno. Antoinette Yvette Guerin. Karen M. Hutton. Leslie Renee Turner. Gregory A. Carroll. Michelle Renee Jackson. Erica Douglas. Wesley D. Simons. Shawanda R. Washington. Dana C. Silva. Kaylin C. Teamer. Neil Mark Sutherland.
Let's have one more round of applause for our master's degree graduates. Will the bachelor's degree candidates please rise? The gold cords worn by our bachelor's degree candidates are in honor of earning a GPA of 3.5 or higher. We congratulate you. <laughs> Chairman Howard, these candidates have completed all requirements for the bachelor's degree. On behalf of the faculty, I recommend the bachelor's degree be conferred upon these candidates at this time. With the authority granted to me by the state of Alabama and the approval of the board and faculty of Columbia Southern University, I hereby confer upon you the bachelor's degree and all the rights and privileges to which you are entitled. Please move your tassel from the left to the right side of your cap as a sign to all of this great achievement. I congratulate you and applaud you. Will each candidate for the bachelor's degree please come forward as your name is called to receive your diploma. Daniel James Bolton, cum laude. Matthew M. Sedgwick. Renee Angel Brintley. Tamara Sherry Horton. Sullivan Bernardo McCurdy, summa cum laude. Timothy F. Graham, magna cum laude. Randall Eugene Patches. Jennifer Merchant Fiala. Kendra Thrash. Pamela Janetta Brown. Colby Lewis Rhodes. Sherry Willis Lopez, cum laude. Derek R. Underwood, cum laude. Lamika Shanae Black. Sandra Sherry Howard. Mary A. Cunningham. Katina R. Ballard, magna cum laude. Raymond Holt. Kamani Heath Sr., summa cum laude. Yolanda A. Malone. James M. McGeever Jr., magna cum laude. Tracy Elaine Trichu. Molly Harrow, magna cum laude. April Holman, cum laude.
Terry C. Tooks, cum laude. Gina Michelle Knight, summa cum laude. Thomas Eric Gaines, magna cum laude. Charles H. Diedrich, cum laude. Eduardo Amesquita. Crystal Pollen. Craig Land. Anthony Coletta, magna cum laude. Joseph W. Tylutke, magna cum laude. Tiffany Marie Thompson, magna cum laude. Michael Edward James Thompson, summa cum laude. Kyle Atkins. Eugene Joseph Evans, Jr., cum laude. Daniel B. Archer. Wayne Joseph Gombar, magna cum laude. Jonathan Joseph Elgas, magna cum laude. Sarah E. Martin, summa cum laude. Jeremy Morris. Sherla Blanche Newton Gates, cum laude. Jason Earl Davis, magna cum laude. Season Annette Lewis. Ursula Jean Baptiste, cum laude. Felicia Merkerson Clark, cum laude. Kashana M. Hilbert. Eric Bradley Dunn. Luther Don Lockridge, magna cum laude. Charles E. Lewis, Jr., summa cum laude. Vivian Teresa Womack. Anthony S. Levitt. Tony Allen Gowen, magna cum laude. Joshua James Miles. David C. Moore. Dejuan Andre Taylor. Nicole Lee Bridget. Timothy Scott Neubauer, magna cum laude. John Brian Gonzalez, magna cum laude. Charles Thomas Adams, summa cum laude. Manita A. Stevens. Nakia Porter Lewis. Stephen Yarbrough, cum laude. Renee L. Dixon, cum laude. Felicia Yvette Jackson. LaShawn Diane Watson, cum laude. Michelle Barnhill Reams, cum laude. Robert Edward Bernard Jr., magna cum laude. Stephen Michael Brown, magna cum laude. Dennis Edwards McCarty, magna cum laude. Charles Patrick Gorey, cum laude. Laura Bess Cedillo. Christy Ann Hasty. Marka T. Parent, magna cum laude. Carl Theodore Times, Sr. Kelly K. Rasmussen, summa cum laude. Raymond J. Fleming, magna cum laude. Jose L. Lopez, magna cum laude. 
Caleb A. Little, cum laude. Grant J. Black, magna cum laude. Daniel J. Hughes, magna cum laude. Brian Edward Nicholson, summa cum laude. Rhonda L. Foster, magna cum laude. Charles D. Johnson, Jr., magna cum laude. Orlando Villamil II, magna cum laude. Eric Gillespie, summa cum laude. Crystal Denise Dunaway. Martha Mendenhall, magna cum laude. Brianna Brown, cum laude. Crystal M. McKinney, magna cum laude. Philip Malinowski Robinson, cum laude. Vicki Wilkes Yosey, magna cum laude. Felicia Rashawn King. Ryan Michael Sims, magna cum laude. Bradrick D. Hawkins, cum laude. Ralph Tate Jr., magna cum laude. James Linton Kitchens, summa cum laude. Elizabeth G. Letlow, magna cum laude. Brittany Turner. Melissa Carter. Jeanette Vrouet, magna cum laude. Jenna Williams. Jennifer Lynn Warriner. Heather Alana Williams, magna cum laude. Sona Wolf, magna cum laude. Kara McNulty, magna cum laude. Carol Ann Cartwright. Peter A. Morando, Jr., magna cum laude. Sonia L. Case, magna cum laude. Joshua Walls, summa cum laude. Betty Barrios. Jared Johnson. Alexander B. Whittington, cum laude. Travis J. Hunter, magna cum laude. Stephen Craig, summa cum laude. Robinson A. Hidalgo, magna cum laude. Primo Reynoso. Solomon Saul Savoy Jr., magna cum laude. Christine M. Harrell, magna cum laude. Daniel James Tibbetts, summa cum laude. James Matthew Myers. Terrence T. Suet Sr., cum laude. John P. Ryan, magna cum laude. Kevin J. Ryan. Sherry Clancy, magna cum laude. Charlene Williams, cum laude. Jason Stewart Sanchez, summa cum laude. Joseph Michael Green, summa cum laude. James Charlie Neesmith, summa cum laude. William E. Monroe II. Matthew Anthony Hudson. Martin Guerrero III, cum laude. Tiffany Catrice Cooley. 
Shateria Marie Dollar, cum laude. Alicia L. Lyons. Shamika R. Stanley. Antoinette Moore, cum laude. Saul Jean Garcia, magna cum laude. Shannon Ramey, cum laude. Angel Sue Burnett, cum laude. Deborah Gail Sanders. Linda K. Weichel. Martina L. Welch. Dakita L. Crawford, summa cum laude. Harriet Ibekwe. Marsha G. Bannis. James Stephen Splon, magna cum laude. Troy Mills, summa cum laude. Dakota Justin Tyree, cum laude. James T. Lewis III. Larry D. Taylor, magna cum laude. Thomas J. Gear Jr., magna cum laude. Terrence L. Spaulding, magna cum laude. Charles Black. Gary Tai, magna cum laude. Kendall Jarrell Foster, cum laude. Imelda R. C. Julio C. Colon, magna cum laude. Brittany Jane Cornine. Nicole C. Woods. Tony A. Woods, Sr. Carlos Jamar Jackson. Charmaine Wilkerson Dunbar. Andrew G. Jackson III, cum laude. Charity Charlene Trevino, magna cum laude. Let's have one more round of applause for our bachelor's degree graduates. Will the associate degree candidates please rise?
Chairman Howard, these candidates have completed all requirements for the associate degree. On behalf of the faculty, I recommend the associate degree be conferred upon these candidates at this time. With the authority granted to me by the state of Alabama and approval of the board and faculty of Columbia Southern University, I hereby confer upon you the associate degree and all the rights and privileges to which you're entitled. Please move your tassel from the left to the right side of your cap as a sign to all of this great achievement. I congratulate you and applaud you. Will each candidate for the associate degree please come forward as your name is called to receive your diploma. Sandra D. Dudley. Angelita Jansons Peterson. Charlene Regis Henry. Tia Felice Tolliver. Nigel Lindsay. Brandy Janelle Bobo, Cheryl McCall Owens, Pamela Rochelle Allen Long, Patrice Coleman, Christian K. Ramos, Eric E. Bertolet. Vanessa Harris, Victoria Tulis, Roger M. Thornton, Case Tom Nielsen, Jason P. Ailing, Victor Sherwood Kelly, Jr. Cody Davis, Ashley Lynette Odom, Jeffrey S. Gordon, Nakia Denise Clay, John E. Finley, Frank Teamer, Christopher Cornelius Allen, Arthur Lee Ross III, <laughs> Kenneth Hall, <laughs> Ramad Bailey, <laughs> Tony E. Bowles, <laughs> Heather Ann Luke, <laughs> Randy Caius, <laughs> Callis.
Let's have one more round of applause for our associate degree graduates. So graduates, today we celebrate you and all of your accomplishments. Do not forget all the hard work it has taken you to get to this point. This is an impressive milestone you have reached on your journey. Finally, do not forget to thank your family, friends, and colleagues who have supported and encouraged you. They have been there waiting, wanting the best for you while waiting for you to achieve it. Make their wait worthwhile. Return their investment in you as many times over as you can. Graduates, please rise and applaud all of those who have supported you. Okay, thank you. Good luck to our graduates of the Columbia Southern University class of 2016. Reverend Buford Lipscomb will now come and deliver our benediction. Thank you, Jeff. Just before we do that, could we take a moment just to, we're reminded that many loved ones and spouses are unable to be here. They're deployed or on duty around the world in various duty stations, and they've watched via live stream their loved ones receive their graduation here today. Could you just turn with me to this camera back there and give them a big cheer? And let's thank them for their service. We miss them being here. Thank you for your service. And also, I just kind of got the idea you won't remember many of us or anything we've said much, but I believe you'll remember John's message. And I believe that you will remember the way of education that lifted this man from his environment and put him on a, a path to reach his dream. And when you see John occasionally on ABC, ABC, Televi ABC television, I think that'll be a reminder to us. And it's a good, it, it, it's a good cue for you to watch him on TV too. So. <laughs> so are you ready to get the party started? Okay, let's pray together now as we conclude. Father in heaven, we just lift up each and every one of these down to the individual. And Lord, as they leave this place, they walk through these doors as students and they walk out of them today as graduates of Columbia Southern University. They've crossed this goal line through all the efforts and the energies and the sacrifice by them and their families. They've done it, Lord. And we congratulate them today and celebrate this great feat with them. Lord, may they now run the race that you set before them, God. May they run well in that place that you've created them to fulfill. Many of them don't even believe in you today, Lord, but you believe in them. And you have a plan and a purpose and a place for each and every one of them, Lord. And this education degree today is just a baton for them to take into their hands to run that race. And Lord, to finish well, we pray that you'd take care of them, Lord, and that you'd be with them, bless them, and prosper them as they go, that they would live not just to, to go through life and just to leave footprints, but they would leave a mark on this world, touching the lives of many others, making a difference with this educational degree they've been granted today, God. To your glory and honor, we pray in Jesus' name. God bless you. Congratulations. Will everyone please stand and remain at your seats for the platform recessional. <coughs>
Again, congratulations to our graduates. Please remember to stop by the alumni booth and pick up your gift. On behalf of Columbia Southern University, I applaud you, the graduating class 2016. At this time, I hereby declare that the ceremony is concluded. Thank you.